He's trying to keep up that momentum going forward and trying to rush into the world's environment. And we're rushing right into the game here. Uh, here we are. Yeah, it's just to cover Zane's team, we have Ter Terrapagos and a Mianxiao, which is very interesting. Going to be the wide guard user there with Faint, Fake Out, and Close Combat. Very strong pick with Chiyo, Amoongus, Tornadus Incarnate, and Indeedee in tow. One thing we have to mention here for Rowan Hall as well, he is undefeated today. But every single time we've seen him on stream, things have not gone his way. Every time we've seen him on stream, he has lost a match, unfortunately. So now he's looking to break the curse right here, right now, leading with Maraidon Iron Hands. Because of that, Ndidi is going to cleanse that electric train immediately. Yes, because of Ndidi's lower speed, of course, is a very safe lead into Maraidon teams in general because it is not possible to get an electric terrain uh, set up if you simply lead the Ndidi. And now the Tapapagos. Uh, even though the Iron Hands is threatening fighting coverage onto the Terrapagos uh, at the current moment, because of the abilities still being active, the Drain Punch isn't going to be a super effective attack into the Terrapagos. And because knowing that, uh, Rowan just opts to, you know, not go, uh, I guess, like, go, not go uh, pedal to the metal there and just opt to go for a, a relatively safe Volt Switch and trying to feel out the situation here. And, uh, it takes a lot of damage. Yeah, but it does do the Volt Switch. It looks like Rowan's going for a complete reposition here. Iron Hand's going to be heading back. Same Yusef. Yes. Putting a lot of pressure on him. That was a very clever switch. Just double Volt Switch is a, a pretty cool trick to use as a Maridon player because, see, in one turn, the Maridon switches right back in and establishes terrain control. And at this point, the Maridon's threatening a lot of damage. In fact, this Brydon can knock out this Terrapagos with the use of Helping Hand and do a Terra Electric Lecture Drift into the Terrapagos, regardless of whether the Terrapagos uses the, its ability uh, with uh, either either Terrapagos' abilities, um, the Terra Shell or the Terra uh, ability negating the terrain. So in Zane's position, he might just be forced to click follow me if Zane doesn't want to instantly lose the Terrapagos this turn. Exactly. Now, oh, we're already seeing the Terra being committed by Zane. Let's see it. It's going to go on to his Terrapagos. Of course it is. And now that widespread that Stellar Storm is going to be absolutely lethal, as I don't think Rowan Hall has a wide guarder on his team. No, he does not. And the helping hand just says, hey, I'm not, hey, I know that I'm threatening follow me. And I know that e even though if, even though I know that you know that you can get the KO with this Miraida, I don't think you're gonna do it. I'm instead just gonna call it and just try to swing into it. And Rowan actually, I believe, went for Trick Room, hoping to establish some speed control here. And we'll see how much this Star Terra Star Storm is about to do. Here it comes. Because yes. This is it. Very likely to get top and cut here. This is what they're battling it out. get the KO on the Iron Hands. That is very huge because had the Iron Hands gone down here, Rowan would have been left with a Maridon in Trick Room. And sure, there's a Ursaluna there too, but you'd rather prefer having the Iron Hands over uh, the Ursaluna against the Tropagos. But without the electric terrain, will this Iron Hands be able to get through this Tropagos or even the Ndidi at this point? You know, because that Terrastalization just cleansed the entire field there. Uh, key point to note though uh, is actually the Iron Hands does have fake out pressure here even though there's an Ndidi on the board the terrain has uh, has been reset and cleared uh, twice over so there's nothing stuffing this fake out and sure enough this fake out just goes in follow me uh, basically getting a, an Ursa Luna switch in for free yeah brilliant play by Rowan Hall great read just checking if, yeah now Still, this Ndidi is preventing Rowan from just landing a clean hit against this Terrapagos, just hoping, right, just hoping that this Drain Punch or this attack from Iron Hands, this Iron Hands is going to move before this Ur Ur Ursa Luna uh, in Trick Room. So should this Ndidi uh, fall to, let's say, uh, 
wild charge, you know, potentially Rowan could get a very clean hit onto that Tropagos and just knock it out. Yeah, Rowan hovering a lot of terror commits there, but he doesn't want to commit it just yet, especially since he has most of his Pokemon still up here. Has that Maridon in the back. Using a switch out, trying to conserve that restricted Mon, and now the Chiyu being switched in is an interesting pick. I think this is a very a reasonable choice. Uh, you want to generally preserve your restricted Pokemon, uh, maybe you just say, hey, I, I don't think I'm going to get much value out of this Shiyu anymore, so I'm just going to use it, just try to stall out some turns so that potentially this uh, Tropagos can come back in in a more advantageous position, but however, the Shiyu falls and is already going to a 4v3 situation. Yeah, 4v3 thing, the dominoes are starting to fall here for Zayn Yusef. We need to see what this last Mon is, and of course it's that Mian Shao. Now the Mian Shao uh, threatens Fake Out, of course, but Rowan smartly preserved that Red Health Phragraph for this scenario, uh, this exact scenario here, where, you know, this Phragraph could just swap back in, and the, you can freely attack with one of the Pokemon. The Iron Hands actually got a decent amount of HP back from that Dream Punch into the Chiyu, so, you know, things are actually looking pretty nice for Rowan here. And not looking too bad indeed. And Shao going to be threatened with a hit here, but it's not going to be a complete one hit KO. It's only going to be swapped out for the Frigoriff, like you just said. Yes, and I think this is pretty reasonable here. Uh, you don't want to instantly lose this uh, Ursa Luna to a potential close combat. Uh, you can kill two birds with one stone doing this. Just swap in the Frigoriff. Uh, shield the Ursa Luna from taking a lot of damage while simultaneously covering for the potential fake out and the critical hit may or may not have mattered but the indeed he falls and now this Iron Hands is just primed to attack into whichever slot it wants there's very little that Zane can do to stop what Rowan wants to do Rowan can just attack straight into that Terrapagos with Trick Room active and nothing cannot nothing on the board can protect Exactly, and now this Drain Punch is going to be doing a lot of damage, especially with that helping oh, hand. <laughs> Let's see it. Trick Room going to let that thing go first, and wow, and knocks out the knockout. Just making sure with that helping hand that this Drain Punch knocks wow. it out. And you know, this is the last turn of Trick Room, so even if Smianchel gets a KO at this situation. The Miraidon is just going to come back in, <laughs> Volt Switch, break the Sash, and then come back in it again. <laughs> and then the, the, you, as you see, the close combat doesn't even do that much damage to Iron Hands. I don't think this Mian is is even capable of breaking through yeah, it, in general. It could have been a knockout there, but the Drain Punch you just absorbed so much health that Rowan Hall is going to take this first set with all four very, Pokemon up. Uh, yeah, very dominant. Uh, performance by uh, Rowan in this first game here. Uh, you know, seeing the NDD Terrapagos lead uh, and leading Maridon directly into that, losing the terrain and taking a lot of damage from that Terra, Terra Star Storm. That could have been, uh, that looked a little dicey for Rowan there, but uh, was able to smartly position and uh, get a Trick Room. It's very, uh, very counterintuitive seeing that you're a Maridon team, right? You know, why would you want to set up Trick Room with uh, with a restricted that is faster than your opponent's restricted, but Rowan said, "Hey, like actually, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use my two slower attackers and try to beat you with Trick Room, and then when the Trick Room runs out, I'm just gonna run you over with this Maridon that's now faster than everything." Yeah, there's so much in meta around that Trick Room play. There's so many options there, and we even saw you used Porygon too with Trick <laughs> yes, Room I mean, in a very interesting yeah. way, almost to count cancel out the Trick Room. At at some points. Yeah, so the Porygon 2, and uh, Porygon 2 is uh, definitely uh, not very common at this no. moment, but you know, uh, traditionally you see uh, for a giraffe uh, in its place, uh, but Trick Room Pokemon in general go well with the Maridon somewhat counterintuitively because Maridon uh, can actually struggle into uh, Ice Rider. Ice Rider can Trick Room, uh, establish speed control, and then you're weak to Glacial Lance. So having actually a Trick Room Pokemon that can easily tank those 
glacial lances, such as Porygon 2, such as Electric Seed, Perigria, and potentially reverse it or go for the foul play is very strong. But we Speaking are back again strong. with the Sayus. Is it the same leads? No. Uh, oh, I think no, it, it is, is the same leads. It is lead. the same leads here. So we'll see how both players adapt in this second game here. We see the terrain come out uh, and the terrain also uh, being reversed, uh, much like the first game. Yeah, there we go. Psyche Surge once again clearing out that Hadron engine, clearing out the electric terrain. And, and now, uh, no uh, cork drive, no abilities there. And the Psychic Seed boost. The Psychic Seed makes it so that this Ndidi is not actually being threatened to a one-hit KO. And this Volt Switch is uh, rather uh, telegraphed in that sense. And Rowan just going for that same play, just trying to establish that speed control, or, or the train control, rather. Uh, and so again, again, a similar play with the foul play. Ndidi takes that very well, of course, but this Maritana is going to most likely switch right back in and potentially just go for uh, damage here, like with either a discharge or even more electric drifts, bolt switches, so on and so forth. Wow, but that Fergaraf takes a lot of damage there. Still up and kicking, but the double volt switch is going to come through. Nice crit there. And it's a good thing that Zane has kept his terrestrialization, right? Uh, the clearing effect of the terrestrialized uh, Tropicos only activates once. Uh, per game on the turn that you terrestrialize. So uh, at the same time, while using Follow Me, you preserve the Terra Shell ability on this Tropicos, meaning that you can most likely take uh, some st some even even very strong hits uh, with uh, Maridon or this uh, Blood Moon that was in the back there. And oh, now <laughs> he's going for it. He is going for the helping hand discharge. Just says, hey, like I know you, you want to just go for the follow me, but it's not gonna matter. You can click follow me if you want. I'm going to hit this Tropagos, whether you like Ooh. it or not, and potentially get a paralysis here. But now without the engine, without the electric terrain, it's gonna be cleared out right here as we're seeing Terrastal Tropagos be committed right here. We'll see how much this discharge does. Uh, the Fred Draft, of course, is going to be knocked out by its teammate Raidon here, but the nice thing about this play is that it provides a free swap pin into the Iron Hand uh, while simultaneously getting rid of the Indeedy dealing damage to the Tropicos. And when their Iron Hands comes back in, the fake out pressure is on, <laughs> or just even attacking with Drain Punch, that's going to put Zane in a tough situation here. I'm not sure if Zane even has uh, Weiger. Oh, actually, but Zane has Mian Shao, so most likely uh, Zane, seeing that Rowan has locked himself into Discharge, uh, most likely wants to bring that in, especially seeing that the Frick Graf has gone down, so no more, prior, uh, no more priority blocking, no more blocking Faint, no more blocking Fake Out. Exactly, and now... He's gonna put out a lot of fake out pressure here with this Iron Hands. Might be able to get that jump, get a little bit of an advantage over, try and knock out but this the Tarapagos. But comes in, perhaps Ooh. seeing from the previous game that the Mian Chao is unable to break through the Iron Hands. That close combat, Mian Chao's strongest attack didn't even do half. And, you know, in the 1v1 scenario, this Iron Hands is just gonna heal everything back uh, with Drain Punch. So perhaps Rowan calling him out on that. You're not going to bring the Mian Shao. I'm actually just going to lock into Discharge and you're you're left here defenseless, basically. Exactly, very low defenses at the ready. Now, a swap out is being considered here. What would the Ursa Luna do here? Maybe tank a hit, keep the Sprite on up, maybe try and get the Electro Terrain back up. It's a few options here. We see that the Mirai on um, Discharge actually didn't even do half damage to that Tropicos with the Helping Hand boost. Uh, the Helping Hand boost is stronger than the Trastalization boost. So, you know, doing some very uh, basic math, uh, Ron says, hey, this uh, Terra Electric Discharge is not going to be able to pick up the KO onto uh, this Tropicos. So I'd rather just prevent this for this turn, maybe lose Ursa Luna in the process, but at least I have them ride on to potentially just clean this up. And, and this Volt Switch being considered here, Volt Switch allows 
the Miraidon to actually just come back in without taking any damage from this Terra Star Storm because this Terrapagos is going to move before this uh, both of Rowan's Pokemon and Moongus uh, not even not having anything to really threaten a Miraidon. This Miraidon is primed to just come back in and threaten even more damage. Yeah, this is a risky position. You have a few choices to make. This is absolutely imperative for Rowan to make the right choice here. Does he stick with the Blood Moon? It looks like he is. He just needs to try and take this step, but the Rage Powder comes through from the Amoongus. That's what the fake out was for. He's a little bit worried about the Spore Pressure as well. I believe that Rowan did target the Trachos there. The reason you might want to consider that uh, over just uh, going into the Amoongus, the Amoongus does have Protect, so that, act, that would disrupt your plan should you have gone into uh, the Amoongus. But the Amoongus redirects the uh, bolt switch into it, just not risking the potential of Drain Punch into the Tropicos. Yeah, now Rowan is up against the wall here. Very low on his last Ooh, two Pokemon months, has to go through three. Health, but if there's any Pokemon that is capable of doing a 1v4, in this case, still 2v, uh, 2v3, uh, but Rhydon's Discharge uh, is a, one of the strongest spread moves in the entire game. So if there's any Pokemon that can pull this comeback off, I think it's Rhydon. Yeah, I think you have to commit a Terror here somewhere. This could potentially be your last turn if things don't go your way. Going with the Electro Drift, going with the Fake Out, Needs to make this one land, but with the rage powder from Amoongus, he needs to use the fake out there. But with the stellar, with the, with the star storm land on his team before it happens. I believe the first discharge occurred without the terrain, so you know, uh, helping hand a 1.5 times boost. But right now, Maridon is actually uh, is in terrain, and with it in terrain, Maridon actually gets a special attack uh, boost as well. So this. Current, in this current situation, this Maridon is hitting stronger than that previous turn where it got the Helping Hand boost, but not going for the, I believe, not going for the Discharge, just calling that Mari uh, that Miancha switch in and getting a clean hit on it. Yeah, there it is. He's going to get one good clean hit off here, but if this isn't positioned towards the Mianxiao, it's all gonna be for naught. Let's see where these hits land. The fake out comes well, the through. The fake out breaks the sash on the Mianxiao, and the Electro Drift goes into the Amoongus. Oh, that's not where you want it to land. A good protect from Zane. But now Rowan Hall gonna have a very rough time coming out of this. This may or may not be too bad of a situation, if only because this Mianxiao is only able to uh, click either Close Combat to pick up a KO on either of these Pokemon, or click Fake Out. It can't do both at the same time, so uh, just simply attacking with both Pokemon uh, could just end up in a, uh, winning this exchange here. Uh, the Fake Out comes in, which means no Close Combat, just maybe hoping that the Pollen Puffs just going to get there uh, with the, uh, on the Maridon. Yeah, let's see if the Pollen Puff is committed. It and must be. You want to try and take out this Maridon. It's the last thing standing between you and victory here. And Pollen and Puff and lands! KO. Yeah, so the ideal situation for Zane is that you leave, you know, in a 1v1 between Iron Hands and Terrapico. So the Iron Hands was most likely going to win that, but with the Amoongus on the field, it can now click Rage Powder to direct away all the uh, dream punches and uh, I don't see much of an out for Rowan here we might see a game three here unless they chooses to not go for Rage Powder but he does uh, just you know crossing crossing his T's and dotting his eyes here and he actually goes for an earth power uh, just to make sure that he gets the knockout. There it is, super effective, getting the knockout on Zane Youssef gonna be taking one point in the set as well we're gonna be going to a game three. Yeah, I don't know. This is make make or break for both of these players. They're at two two, and um, they may or may not make it in through resistance if they uh, finish the Swiss uh, with a record of three two. So, you know, and should this is a game that decides a, the a chance lot. of receiving championship points towards each of these players' world's invitations. So, a lot is riding on this last game here. 
Yeah, there's so much riding on this one right here. I know both these players want this win very badly. You want to try and make as big of a run as you can, especially for Rowan. He made a big trip out here, so I know he wants to get as much value as he possibly can. He's in a good position to do so. I think on paper, his team is performing very, very well. Zane Youssef now figuring out that opening with the Murad on, trying to trick it out now, putting up the fake out pressure like you saw in that game too. It looked like Rowan tried to do the same thing with the double volt switch, but he was ready for it. I think that Rowan, you know, went for the same play game uh, games two uh, on turn one, but actually deviated uh, beyond that point, choosing to go for the discharge rather than the trick room uh, strategy. We saw the trick room strategy really work in his favor, and you know, looking at Zane's team, things that would disrupt the trick room strategy would be uh, an Amoongus, but you have Electric Chain to actually just stop this Amoongus from being too much of a threat while in trick room. So if Rowan just sets up Trick Room. I believe that this, he might just be in a prime position to sweep through uh, Zane's team with uh, through the combination of Blood Moon and Iron Hands here. Yeah, this Jumping is a very interesting match. Here, and it's going to be Tropicos and Amoongus versus Volcarona, actually. You know, that's this is a, a you know, the Volcarona bring is brand new to this uh, best of three here, so we'll see how. Uh, Rowan plans to uh, maneuver this situation. Yeah, electric terrain gonna be not gonna be stopped here. So now this Maridom gonna be at full effectiveness. And this Amoongus not getting as much value because of said electric terrain. Now, because of Maridon uh, is in the field, it can't swap back in on this turn. Meaning that this indeed he could just swap out swap in uh, next to that turn or next to that Amoongus, and the Amoongus is actually able to just spore something on that side, and Rowan's very cognizant of that. He brought his grass type, the, the spore immunity, uh, to potentially cover for that uh, possibility, um, and actually just choosing to hard swap out into the Whimsica here. I'm gonna choose to hard swap out here. And if you had to choose which one is you know, if you're afraid of that play where the Ndidi goes for, or the Ndidi swaps in and the Amoongus goes for Spore, uh, if you have to guess which one, which slot the the Spore is going to land on, it's probably going to be the Maridon slot, right? Because you expect the Maridon to just click Volt Switch, uh, and it's going to switch uh, into something, prob uh, most likely. But it is the Whimsicott, which uh, was not brought into the early games, and actually was able to catch that um, Amoongus on that protect. But is Spore a factor here with the electric terrain? Uh, well, the Ndidi could swap back in here. And I the Ndidi right. swapping back in would be very strong for Zane, as uh, that could also block uh, Encore and uh, put that Volcarona to sleep. So, but on the plus side here, right, like Ndidi and Amoongus, those are very pa two very passive Pokemon. Uh, and it's going to be hard to maneuver out into your more offensive pieces when you have two passive Pokemon like that. Usually, you go in with your offense, you attack, and when things, when the situation calls for it, you swap back into your maybe your bulkier Pokemon like Ndidi, like Amoongus. But when you have two in the front already, it's going to be hard to position. It's going to be harder to position out of that kind of four states there. Now we're going for the Quiver Dance, trying to make this Volcarona the sweeper. But I've seen Rowan use this Volcarona before. I haven't seen much value get used out of it. Pterosaur Storm being committed already at half HP. But with the le uh, leftovers here, and also the fact that the Rowan, uh, this Volcarona is going to be faster than Tropicos, could actually just go for another Quiver Dance and make sure that this Star uh, Star Storm is not going to get the KO here. And we'll see like how this plays out, right? Uh, Whimsicott swaps out for Maridon here, just trying to get the terrain control back. You don't want to really swap out the Volcarona that just clicked uh, Quiver Dance, right? So bring in the Maridon, two of your most offensive pieces here, and you know, Amoongus is Zane's only electric resistance is now being threatened by the Volcarona that is now uh, ready to attack with Flamethrower just get the KO, but actually Zane correctly calls the, the Maridon switching in and clears out this terrain, so 
and actually goes for the helping hand, so a lot of damage is going to go down onto this Maridon. Yeah, Volcarona going for the protect once again. This Maridon going to have to eat a full stellar, stellar star storm there. There's a lot of modifiers uh, in play here, right? There's gonna, there's this terrestrialization tra modifier, there's the helping hand, there's the choice specs. We'll see how much this does. And it deals a lot of damage, but importantly, this Miraidon is still alive. Miraidon is a very slippery Pokemon. It can come in and out uh, using Volt Switch. And even if it is at just one HP, you know, it is, it is such an offensive, such a fast Pokemon that you really rather would just get the knockout if you can. But Miraidon's just slight, Surviving on just red health is a very big deal for Rowan. It's a big deal indeed. Now, follow me coming through this indeedy. Gonna protect this Terrapagos even further. Flamethrower coming through with the Quiver Dance. Still not doing all too much. Now this is pretty good, right? Uh, for saying, seeing that the Ndidi was Psychic C, so it is at plus one Spadef, and you're looking at two uh, special attackers, so, you know, it is actually very difficult for Rowan to remove that uh, Ndidi. He could have actually gone for something like a Draco Meteor to get the KO, but of course that means that the Rhydon's not safe from this Terra Starstorm, and it's just gonna lose the Rhydon if he did, did that. So, doesn't want to sacrifice the Maridon for the Indeedee would rather just swap out and sacrifice the Focus Sash on the Whimsicott instead. Yep, this Volcarona hanging on with this leftover is getting as much value as it can. But I feel like without that second Quiver Dance, this is not the sweeper he needs it to be. Yeah, perhaps here, uh, uh, Rowan could consider going for the Moon Lesson to Indeedee to pick up the KO and remove the threat of Follow Me. That Follow Me is really what's preventing Rowan from getting a clean hit on the Tropicos. But on the plus side here, Tropicos has already terrestrialized, so if the Maridon comes in and doesn't have, then isn't being threatened to just lose its terrain, uh, depending on what Zane goes for. And the Iron Hands is at full health, so. You know, if the MDD does go down here, this is actually, this could be a pretty decent position for Rowan here. Yeah, he needs to keep this Volcarona up so he can take out this Amoongus with that flamethrower. But the MDD protects. Wow. Seeing through that plan, and we'll see. The Moonblast goes into the MDD, and most likely the Terra well, of course, the Terra Star Storm hitting both targets is going to get the KO on this Whimsicott. There it is, going through everything. The big, wide sweeping move, doing so much damage, is going to take up the Wind Scott. Now, this is going to be a pretty key turn here. What do you bring in? Do you bring in the Iron Hands or do you bring in the Bridon? Just hoping that the the monster that it is is going to pick up the KO on this Terrapagos here. And, well, goes into the Miraidon and says, hey, I, I, I think I can KO this Terrapagos with my Miraidon right here, right now. I can I can take the KO on this Indeedee with my Volcarona, right? This Volcarona is faster than this Miraidon because of that Quiver Dance boost. And, you know, with with the Indeedee gone, there's nothing protecting that Terrapagos from Miraidon. And now you need this Electro Drift to take out this Therapagos. It all hinges on this. One clean strike decides the fate of Rowan Hall right here. Yes, and although the Amoongus is in the back, the Maridon is so strong that it basically ignores resistances. Despite being a grass type, Amoongus uh, has I believe has a chance to just get knocked out from a resisted Electro Drift. So we'll see what's Ooh. about to take place here. Two super strong attacks. Let's not forget that Volcarona also is a really strong offensive threat right now with the plus one uh, attack boost because of the Quiver Dance. There's the Terra. Let's see how this Maridon performs. Yes, Zane. Uh, obviously very afraid of the uh, Electro Drift, wants to potentially maneuver back into a position where the Tropicos isn't sitting next to a redirection user uh, and try to win the game that way, clicking Terra Star Storm. But we'll see if this is going to pan out for him here. Yeah, it's electro it's Drift it's goes electro into drift. the Nian Shao. Nian Shao losing the Focus Ash here, uh, says, 
Zane says, yeah, I don't want to take the damage on the Tropicos here. I'd rather lose my Focus Sash and get Mian Shao and threaten Fake Out here and just see if I can wiggle my way back uh, from this very, very threatening uh, set of Pokemon that Rowan Hall has uh, on, his on his side of the field. It's a very, a lot of pressure here on both sides. Rowan with the upper hand in terms of offense, but wow, going for the Tarapagos, trying to use that fake up pressure to end things right here. Saying going for the offensive route. You see both players are probably trying to calculate out this end game here, right? Which, how, where is the fake out going to go? How much damage is this Iron Hands gonna take if I try to swap it in? How? How do I position this board in such a way that the Maridon kid or the Iron Hands or the Volcarona can get a clean land onto the Tropicos to try to win this game? And Zane, on the other hand, is also trying to figure out like which which side do I fake out? Like which, you know, like how do I make sure that the Tropicos is going to end up in a situation where it's going to be next to this Amoongus so that it doesn't just get run over by uh, an electric type there. And actually just swaps it out and the Amoongus comes in. He needs this Amoongus up for this next engagement with his with And his we see that the Mian Shao didn't go for the fake out, actually opting to go for the close combat and the off chance that Rowan goes for a play that uh, leaves the perhaps uh, Miraidon exposed in such a way that it was li liable to get KO'd. Yeah, really good play there. And now Tropagos is going to be going out. The Rage Powder is going to be absolutely annoying. But this Flamethrower, he needed it here for this exact moment. He needs to take out this Moongus and free up his Iron Hands and Maridon to win the rest of the game. Very impressive, too, that this Volcarona at some point was close to red health and is almost at, ha oh, is at half health. Probably at the end of this next turn, if it takes no damage, is going to be back in the green, all thanks to that leftovers. And being at that range, uh, it, I don't think it's no long it's no longer being threatened by a KO by the Terra Starstorm, right? You know, going for the fake out. This is going to be an uncontested fake out into the Tropicos. Tropicos can't protect, so you know, Amoongus protects, of course, into the flamethrower, but this is a winning exchange, right? Even though not much has happened, Rowan gets uh, one extra turn of leftovers. Rowan gets just a little bit of chip on that Tarapagos, so that potentially in uh, the future, right, the Miaridon, uh, if it was an unfavorable role in some way, uh, is capable of just taking the KO here. Yeah, and now, this is a very good position for Rowan Hall. I mean, he goes for the double wow, protect. he gets it. He gets a double protect. But we'll see if this Terra Starstorm even picks up the KO on the Volcarona, all thanks to that leftovers and procking multiple turns in a row. This, uh, this. Oh, the Earth Power. Ooh, okay. Yeah, it does not oh, get the KO. Oh, because the bug. Yeah, it is. Unfortunately for Zane here, uh, Volcarna is not weak to ground. And now, although the Amoongus got the double protect, it needs a triple protect to potentially get it. Or just, yeah, at this point, just attack the Tropicos, right? Either this Rage, yeah, Zane forced to just click Rage Powder because now this Tropicos is in range of that Flamethrower and the Flamethrower gets a clean land onto the Amoongus. And, yeah, looks in, looking pretty good, uh, barring some extraordinary critical hits or if uh, Ron mis-inputted uh, his moves here. Yeah, he used it on the Iron Hands, does not does take it not out. not even KO despite the super effective hit, and the game hasn't finished. Yeah, beautiful finish for Rowan Hall. Stuck it out through thick and through thin. Brought this one all the game, all the way to game three. Zayn Youssef so good at adapting as well. Respect all around to both the players. That is going to be our final Swiss round, and that's going to be Rowan Hall winning out the set. That was a very impressive adaptation on Rowan's end, right? He uh, actually went for um, a fur draft and Blood Moon set. Uh, centered game plans in game one and two and just completely switch gears into the gear the Volcarona mode uh, and perhaps just took Zane completely off guard and uh, that's it's the mark of a strong player right you, even if 
uh, you know, you understand that this is the best of three. You know, even if you, you know, you can adapt, you can change your strategy, you can change your approach, and uh, there's a little bit of conditioning that happened rare, right? Uh, Zane was very comfortable in bringing that specific four into Rowan, and seeing that Rowan brought the same Pokemon the first two games, Zane thought, okay, well, this is just Rowan's uh, uh, strategy into my team. But Rowan said, hey, I'm just gonna catch you on this third game, and this third game is the one that's gonna count, right? It is, you know, two, 2v or 2 1, 2 0, oh, it doesn't matter as long as it's whoever gets that second win first is the, the one that's going to be declared winner. Exactly. There's so much to c calculate there, and there's so much you have to do to stand through these very, very intense games. You have to stay dialed in, locked in, and taking every option into account. That's what these players did today. But with all that being said, that was just the Swiss rounds. Yes. We have made it here to the top cut. But before we see the top cut, we're gonna have to throw it to a little break. So we're gonna tally up everything, get everybody in place, and we'll be right back with the top cut. <laughs> 